Hello, happy first day of spring. I'm gonna I'm gonna catch you up to where we're at. It looks like I've made a mess. It's really not as bad as it seems. We're gonna put this nook of bees that I've overwintered, which were located 50 yards from here on the edge of the field there. Um, I came up last night, 8.30, 15 till nine, uh, walked down there, put a piece of screen over the opening, stapled it down. Carried the bees up here, set them so they're at the same level as the entrance on the long hive that we're gonna put them in. You see this brush hanging in front of these. So I came up after the sun got on these bees this morning. I walked up here and and they were all starting to become active. We had a low of 37 this morning. Uh, they, they had clustered, they weren't piled up against the screen. I wasn't worried about them piling up and smothering one another. I knew the temp was gonna get low enough that they'd have to cluster up high. I came up this morning I went out here to a, to a cedar tree and I cut two boughs of cedar, zip tied them together and then hung them over the opening, reached in behind it, took my, my knife and pulled the screen wire down and made two openings for the bees to come out. And this morning when they came out, they came out and of course the first thing they saw was the the cedar boughs so already number one i'm going to say being closed all night and, and two or three hours of light this morning they understood something was wrong obviously i did this to make them reorientate take to this spot if you'll look right here i've got bees coming in that are already loaded up with pollen these bees have already been out gathered pollen and have come back so it worked now if you do this method of of moving in a in one apiary in a yard where you don't want to take these bees off for several days before you bring them home to put them where you want them this is a great method to get them to reorientate to a certain spot um, when they do this it will mess some up because i think some will just shoot out they'll go they'll forge and when they return they'll they'll return to where they were yesterday now i can look down and i can see where this was sitting and i see the bees in the air there's not 25 bees down there i've been down there and watched them and they fly and they figure out okay well the hive's definitely not here so they start making a bigger area of coverage looking and i think they hear and sense see these bees out front and they join them uh, i don't think we'll have any orphaned bees because of it if we do i think they'll load up pollen or nectar and they'll go to one of these hives and most of the time if they bring a a gift with them so to speak those other hives will let them in um, because they would have been displaced long enough that they might not have a strong odor of this colony on them. I'm going to leave this here while we make this move. I've got one thing that's a little bit of a concern, and it's not anything that we can't fix. It's, it just may be something that has to be addressed down the road. I have a medium super on top of a five frame deep nook i don't know i suspect i have brewed up here but i've checked a lot of these hives and i think that the majority of them now have that queen pushed back in and they're laying in the deeps if that's the case and most of this is just honey or could just be comb um i think i'll just take these mids and give them to bees that have a i can take a feeder out and give them the frame um, I, i'm hoping to find a lot of brood in the five deep frames that would make it the best case scenario but we're not going to know till we get in there so we about as well just get started and we'll try to make this move where you can see everything that's going on maybe we'll We'll see that uh, queen and see some eggs and larvae and brood. Uh, obviously, we have pollen coming in. Here's one that now has a little 
a little red maple on her. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put my veil on and let's just get started. I've got my lovely wife on the fancy shooting sticks today. Wind's not too terrible. I hope y'all can, can hear everything. Okay. A little bit of remainder of the uh, winter feed there left on the. Let me get it from this other side. On the in inner cover. We'll, we'll lay a lot of these components that have bees on them as we can. We'll lay them over into the <coughs> end of the long hive. That'll just be bees that transfer without getting beat up or shook. Or... I assume you're looking for the queen. Well, never hurts to look, right? I, I can tell you right now that medium frame that's beside this is loaded with brood. Yeah, let me beat up some bees. Let me lay this right here. What you can't see is I've got Four frames of honey. Laying right in here that I'm gonna give these bees when we do this. We're gonna go ahead and inspect this top box. Got my queen spotter on y'all side. I've got bees, cap, brood, friends got cap, brood, new bees emerging, some honey stores left over. In this case, we know it's really not honey stores, it's stored feed. I don't see a queen. I'm gonna slide that over. We're gonna have so many frames of brood, I'm gonna do something that I do not recommend that y'all do. I'm gonna leave these mids mixed in with the deeps. And what that's gonna do is allow her to keep her population, number one. Number two, it's gonna make me a job because when I set these mid frames, here we got honey, fresh pollen, cap brood, so far very little drone brood. Back to, back to what I was saying, that's drone, cap drone on the bottom, the large cells. Notice it's protruding sticking off the comb. What that's going to do is with these sitting beside deep frames, they're probably going to hit a nectar flow and they're going to add about three and a half inches of comb to the bottom of these medium frames. Now, a lot of times that ends up being drone brood which is perfectly fine. At a later date, I can trim that off if I want. 
that might aid me in removal of some mites. I can allow it to hatch. At some point, they'll put honey in it. I can cut it off then and use it for cut comb. Uh, lots of things can happen. I don't like doing that, but anyway, these bees needed to have this mid on them over winter. Gave me a good way to feed them. Gave them extra warmth for a top top area to start rooting in. This frame could be a candidate to be removed if she's not on it. And I don't see her. Looks like they're just storing pollen. There's only four of these up here since I had the feeder. Looks like they're using it for pollen stores. All right. Now, unless she's doubled back and come up, these bees have all left that inner. They're all over these frames now down in here that's got the, uh, got the comb and honey on it. Let's bust this off and set it right over here in here in the box. Now your cedar branch is gonna go with that. Well, just a good FYI. catch. Good catch. We're gonna take this off sooner than we thought. That was a hey husband, you're not paying attention moment. And she's right. Look at now look at these V's. There you can see what I was talking about with the screened wire last night. I put the cedar boughs over front of them. I reached in with a knife, pushed their screen down so they could come in and out. Wind's blowing just right, not having to work that smoker. Boy, these little new boxes are tight. Not much over here. I've actually got pollen, mm -hmm. some fresh nectar. I haven't put feed. There's a walking, living, breathing drone. Could have been carried over or could have been a first hatch. Look at this red. Oh, yeah. Sure, this smoke is <laughs> going right up my nose. Can't have the camera operator choking on smoke. All right, we're gonna call that there. They got them a pollen frame going there. We're just gonna drop it right on in here. came home yesterday and I walked to a hive and it had the entrance reducer just laying out in front and I thought yep I have uh, let them beat me to it they've sworn I went into the hive very little very little drone appropriated in that particular hive 
I think she had five frames of brood both sides in the bottom box and bees bumper to bumper. I guess they got hot and just decided they would cut the reducer out and shove it off the front. But they didn't swarm. I found I found the queen down in there. This has got a lot of fresh nectar put in. See it? Can you see it shimmering? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you turn that frame over, I can hear the pollen falling out. I can see a little brood here, so we're getting into a, a brood area. We'll just see how, how long it looks like she's been down in this bottom box. Capped worker brood. A few drones up at the top. I see nectar at the bottom. I see a little pollen. I see a queen. A little bit of old capped honey. A little bit of fresh. But right there's the motor. Interesting story about this nook of bees. In November, I did a apiary survey for our plant board. And uh, when we took samples from this box, there were two queens in here. This one being the healthiest, the other one looked very rough to say the least. She had no wings, so I opted to send her with the guys in the live sample, and uh, that way maybe they got some information out of it as to, you know, what was wrong with her, or and maybe it just been so late she was the old mother of this one, and and so late on down the road that. She couldn't fly, and they chose not to get rid of her. Where'd she go, Grant? But anyway, I thought it's always pretty neat when you... Right there, on the bottom. All right, she's coming back up the hill. Yep. Okay. It'd be kind of a mind-boggling deal if we found a third queen. That would be a first. I've seen several double queen boxes. She hasn't been down in this bottom that long. It looks like everything that's coming in now, including her eggs, is fresh and being carried now. So they probably spent some time cleaning up these combs, getting them ready for, for her. She has not been to this one, but they have got a lot of nectar put in that frame. Nothing on the other side. Look at that, there's some orange. If you've never been in a box of bees before, springtime is an awesome time to get to look inside. They don't really care what we're doing. They've got stuff to do. And we're really, even though we're messing with the program, we're not hurting anything and it's just a great time to, to see what all's going on. 
Right, this is the part where John ends up regretting doing what he's about to do. Nothing we can't fix. We've got brood here. There wasn't a lot going on here. There wasn't a lot going on here. And brood started there. So, these, I believe, have got a lot of population that we're not willing to give up for her. We're going to put this right in here between two deeps. We're going to scoot this deep back over. We're going to reach right here. I see already that I'm going to need probably another deep. Lots of brood here. And you're wanting to sandwich them between deeps. So I they want don't... to sandwich them between deeps because if I put two mids side by side or three, and then you've got a wall here and a wall here and they've got this much room and they may build that comb this way and attach it across all four of those medium frames so we don't want them doing that we want to keep this if they've got a guide for all intent and purpose and, and every time so far i've seen them do this they'll just come straight down off the bottom of that mid build that adder and It'll stop at the bottom of the frame next to it. It won't cause you any problem when you're checking this hive or, or correcting this down the road. This, this, we're gonna have the old long hive loaded here. That's an overwintered queen. She was a new queen last fall. I, I brought that up to say, she's probably gonna have a swarm tendency but maybe, maybe we can woe that up a little. Did I put that between two deeps? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I almost didn't do that. Mid. Deep. Three out of the four up here had brood. That's a... Uh, A good deal. This was some overwintered pollen. I am not going to give this one to them. I'm not going to give this back to them. Kind of a disappearing bee deal, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Honey. Honey on this side, foundation. That'll be the equivalent to more room for more bees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to leave it at that. And then I am going to bring a queen excluder. 
within the next little bit. Put these frames back in the fridge. And I'll move a frame with comb outside. I'll put the queen excluder, I'll open another port, and I'll start letting these field bees bring nectar straight into the long box to produce honey. So, all right, we've got the uh, transfer completely made now. And I've got out of my gear. And I wanted to show you a little bit about how these bees are reacting now to the new home. So where they had came back and got in the high I've propped them up right here on the stoop of the long hive. And you can see those beautiful colors come in on those bees. There's some fanning going on. They're trying to let everybody know this is now the new spot. This is where all this is supposed to go. Y'all go ahead and get it bring it when you come back home bring it right in here and drop it off they are amazing fanning's part of the signals communication moving some pheromones probably that red's really gotten prevalent the last couple of these warm days coming in. I'm backing up 100 bees standing here talking. So anyway, just wanted you to see how that, what I did with their box. And that'll make the transfer. I'll, I'll probably just leave that the rest of the day come back up here at dark pick up all my box parts and put them up and everything will be right as rain thanks again we've got our our long hive reloaded now I hope y'all enjoyed watching us do this I hope we have a greater success this time with this. Not that the first time was a failure, it was just a learning experience. As long as we're learning, that's all that really matters. I hope y'all have enjoyed today. We sure have enjoyed showing y'all what we've done. I hope some of this is uh, educational to you uh, I, I would like to hear your comments suggestions and and the gentleman that made the comment i can't think of the name right at the moment about the crack in the lid don't judge me by the way i took care of it but i did put a piece of gorilla tape over it we'll address that before winter okay hopefully where is that right <laughs> right here so you know it's a man fix. I, I'm sure you'll forgive me and understand. All right, we've got a strong box of bees inside this long hive. Uh, I'm going to shut them down. I'm going to move this around and let them be right there at the entrance. These girls are carrying pollen like it is not going to be produced anymore. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until we see you again, roll that beautiful bee footage.